what's going on YouTube Taylor Prentice TP money whatever you want to call me and today I'm here with the video and this video is gonna be on how to make hi-hats in Logic Pro so this video is gonna be more geared towards beginners so if you feel intermediate to advanced uh, this might not be the video for you but who knows you might pick up on a couple of tips and tricks you didn't know so let's just go ahead and get right on into it alright so first things first you're gonna need to drag in a hi-hat sound so just pick a hi-hat sound you like and uh, if you don't have any drum kits that you like, uh, just search Reddit or uh, definitely go check out MajorLoops.com. They've got some great high quality kits. So once you've got your hi-hat dragged into Logic Pro, you're just going to want to right click on it, convert to new sampler track, and then hit OK. And that is going to bring up a new track for you. And uh, this new track is going to be a MIDI version of the WAV file you just created and uh, it's going to be a whole sampler track so every time I click on this it's going to play uh, what I had just sampled which was that hi-hat but the EXS24 sampler is actually pretty cool it allows you to pitch uh, things up and pitch them down so that's what we're going to do here in case you didn't see what I did uh, you're just going to want to change poly to mono so things sound a little clearer and then you're going to want to go to edit and you're going to want to click this little cube or box down here, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to want to drag it to the right. And you're going to want to drag it to the left. But uh, make sure that you know what this is. So uh, C3 is where it started. So what that means is the thing that I sampled, the root note is always going to be on C3. And anything above that is going to be a higher pitch. And anything below that is going to be a lower pitch. But that's pretty much it for that. You can exit out of there, click save, and then you can go ahead and exit out of the EXS24 sampler. And then uh, you're going to want to open your piano roll. And on MIDI files, you can just uh, click twice and it'll bring that up. Or you can go up here and click the little scissors and it'll bring it up as well. And you're going to want to make sure you have your brush tool selected. So uh, the brush tool, in my opinion, is a lot more handy than the pencil tool. And I have it set as my secondary tool. So whenever I'm clicking, uh, I'm holding command click. As you can see, when I press command, it switches from the arrow to the little paintbrush. And yeah, so uh, whatever you have this set to determines what size notes you're going to be drawing in. So this is how I start off with high notes for almost, or er, <laughs> with high hats for almost every song. I'll just literally uh, make a four bar loop. And I'll go ahead and just draw eighth notes all the way across. And that's going to give you a pretty basic pattern. But yeah, eighth note hi-hats are really popular in rap music, especially. Uh, Pierre Bourne is someone who does this a lot, and a lot of other producers do it too. So if you have a pretty complex beat and you just want some simple hi-hats, eighth notes are a good place to start. Obviously, if you're working at lower BPMs like uh, 60 or 70 or even 80, uh, you're going to want to use the 16th note instead of the eighth note because just simple math, uh, your BPMs are half, so your notes need to be doubled, if that makes sense. But, all right, that's pretty much it. So you've got your brush tool selected, you've drawn in some notes, and now where do you go? Uh, it's really up to you, and hi-hats are a lot of fun. That's why I wanted to go ahead and make this video. I feel like they're my strong suit, but I feel like that's because they're so much fun. So a lot of times, uh, what I'll do is I'll turn the velocity down, and if you just click on the note, it'll highlight all the notes in that row. So uh, I'll just bring it down to the 80s or somewhere around there. I like it to be in the green notes. As you can see, the notes will change colors as you change the velocity. But uh, yeah, so in rap, it's really common for the claps to get put on the threes. So I'm going to unmute this. All right, so that sounds pretty good. But uh, what I like to do is build around my claps and play around with note sizes. And don't be, afraid, don't be afraid to play around with the triplets. And also don't be afraid to pitch stuff up and down. Uh, Hi-hats are really just about being creative but not being overly creative, I would say. Because you don't want to uh, take away from the song or seem like you're doing too much and kind of end up ruining the beat. You want them to be subtle and uh, useful. You don't want them to be purposeless which I feel like uh, was a problem I struggled with when I started making hi-hats is I would just get too crazy and it would end up doing more harm than it did good.
but all right time to mess around with some patterns folks as i said i have my uh claps on the threes so i'll like take a couple notes out after the threes and then uh i'll like do some 16th notes into the hi-hat And yeah, so uh, these eighth notes and these uh, really far pitch downs are how you're going to get your uh, Pyrex Whippa and Chase the Money type of hi-hats. It's funny because I typically uh, don't really pitch hi-hats up. Uh, sometimes I do, but I always typically pitch them down. It just seems to sound better, I think, personally. But it's all personal opinion. So... If you like pitching them up, I definitely hear that in songs. And I do do it occasionally, just not near as much as I pitch it down. Yeah, so build around the claps. Start off with something simple and then make it more complex as you go. And the whole time, just keep in mind that uh, your hi-hats aren't going to be the main focus of the song. I know like some uh, producers have really loud hi-hats that really stand out and that's becoming more popular. But uh, while you're not as comfortable with the hi-hats, definitely try and like tuck them and make them more subtle until you feel confident and then you can start uh, doing really creative things to kind of show them off, which I do think is getting more popular in today's rap, which I'm all here for because I'm a big fan of the hi-hats. And I think uh, creative hi-hats can really spice up a song and add a lot to it. So I'm just going to show you guys what I had originally uh, done with the hi-hats for this song. Uh, I think this uh, was really sick, or for this beat, I mean, it's, it hasn't been made into a song yet. If you know an artist who would like this beat, definitely hit me up. I've been trying to get somebody on this. It's one of my favorite beats I've made in a while. Uh, shout out to Red the Kid for this amazing loop. It sounded like uh, something like Q Beats or uh, Palace would make, so uh, that was where I kind of got the idea to make it sound like a Pyrex Whippa type of beat. And uh, I'm going to show you guys these hi-hats. And uh, here's the hi-hats by themselves. But yeah, if it sounds like you're hearing more hi-hats than you are seeing, uh, you're actually correct because I do have a delay on here, and uh, that's just a little sauce I like to add on my hi-hats. I would actually love doing a hi-hat plug-in video, like my top five or top three plugins for hi-hats, something like that. Uh, so I'll definitely be doing that. If you guys would like that, definitely leave a comment down below. And if you guys have made it this far, I really appreciate it. Please leave a like and subscribe. And please go check out Major Loops. Go check out Red the Kid. And deuces.